welcome to today's episode of In the Studio. I'm here with Vanessa Rapitz and Paul Del Bene. So we're here to talk about Common House Productions. Can you tell me what is it? So Common House Productions is a new theater group that is located here in Davis. Um, and we just started doing productions this past summer. So we're a theater group that puts on plays in the Davis and larger surrounding areas. Okay. Um, so how many shows have you produced so far? This is our second. We produced one in October. It was a ghost story called The Woman in Black. So we actually opened it on Halloween in the rain. <laughs> um, and it was, it was a great opening show for us. Oh, I remember that one. Um, so are you based out of Davis or? We are based out of Davis. Um, we do draw actors from Davis and Sacramento and larger areas. Um, and some of our members are in San Francisco and even down in LA, but our main functioning happens here in Davis and all of our productions so far have been in Davis. Okay. Um, so uh, what kind of actors do you have a part of Common House Productions? Are these students or graduates or? Um, actually, most of our actors are uh, not in school anymore, but we, have so, we do have some graduate students. Um, we have professional actors like Paul to my <laughs> right. Um, and then we have people who are teachers and just community members at large. <laughs> okay, so Paul, what drew you to Common House? Were you here at the beginning? Uh, I wasn't in the first production of Common House, but I know a lot of the people who are involved uh, with Common House Productions. And um, I've been in Davis for about three years, um, and so I just decided that I wanted to start getting back into uh, performing with some of the professional companies. So um, this is actually my first stage production um, in probably about two years, because uh, previously I worked mostly in variety and vaudeville shows in Europe. Oh, wow. So. That's so cool. So yeah. how big is the group? Is it? Well, so the group is sort of different. We have a board of eight members. So we all decide which shows go up, who's going to be involved in directing or co-directing in, in my case. Um, and then we sort of gather our actors and our crew and we do open auditions. So there are, there are eight of us. Um, that are serving on the board, and then it depends on the show who else is involved. We like to think about, about it as a sort of community production group, so we try to draw it from all areas of the community. Oh, that just sounds perfect for in Davis. <laughs> um, so which kind of audience are you like reaching out? This is for like adult productions, right? <laughs> well, adult. <laughs> 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 Not adult in that way, but yes. Um, I mean, most of our shows are children friendly, mm -hmm. um, even if they're a little scary, yeah. like The Woman in Black. Um, we actually, some of our best audience members were children. But yeah, it's mostly aimed at Davis and the larger Sacramento community. So we try to find shows that are really focused on storytelling that can bring in a really broad audience. So it's not really aimed at a specific yeah. group. And this production, The Foreigner, I think is a good fit for Davis as well because it's uh, definitely kind of a comedy uh, farce with lots of twists and turns in it. So it uh, kind of takes you certain directions and then kind of turns a corner to something unexpected. So uh, I think it's really a good fit for a Davis public. Yeah. Um, so this production company, it's only been around for a little while, but is, are you hoping to see it grow? In I mean, I think that's our ultimate yeah. goal. Yeah, I mean, we're on our second show, and we already have summer productions planned, um, so we are moving forward pretty rapidly, and we are hoping to have regular seasons in the future. Um, so for, uh, what, what's your role exactly in Common House? Um, it's, it's an interesting question for Common House because we all sort of fill different roles. Yeah. In terms of the board, there is a sort of hierarchy. So we do have a president and a vice president and treasurer and secretary like any group would have. But then for any given production, we fill in different roles. For, so for instance, for The Woman in Black, I was doing live sound um, and making great plunger noises for a bog scene 
of drowning, which was <laughs> which was my favorite part of that show, I think. No, but so for this play, I'm actually co-directing, and then for the summer productions, I will be the dramaturg. So there are ways in which we all sort of take on different roles with each production and share the work. So how do you um, how do you pick which plays you're going to do? Um, it's normally something we have a we have an actual official process where you can fill out a form mm -hmm. and you make a specific proposal um, to the board and we accept a play. And so this proposal actually was brought to us by our president, Steph Hankinson, um, and she had seen the play before and knew that it was sort of perfectly story driven for our group. And she made the proposal and um, Katie Gehring, my co-director and I proposed to take it on. And so it's that sort of democratic process. But we really chose this particular play The Foreigner because it's hilarious. Even in our first read through, we were all just cracking up because it's so funny. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, so do you look for like people to volunteer and like come in to help out with the uh, productions? Absolutely. We're always looking for volunteers. You know, if you talk to me for too long at a coffee shop, I might rope you into doing <laughs> sounder lights, depending on what our needs are. Um, but yeah, we're really hoping to get a lot of community response and to have people who are interested in helping us out either, you know, to be in a play or just to sort of give us info on and feedback about how the plays are going and to be a part of our group. So for like rehearsals and stuff, do you, where, do you, where do you guys practice? Well, we've tried to do most of our practicing on the Wyatt deck for this show at UC Davis, which is where we're putting on the production mm -hmm. so that we get real stage time. But in times of inclement weather, we mostly are doing our rehearsals in a garage in a residential house mm -hmm. here in Davis. So it's sort of, it's that grassroots sort of production. It's all you need. Exactly. Um, so... Uh, Paul, do you want to talk about your role in this play? Yeah, well, in, in this production, I'm uh, Charlie Baker, um, who's kind of a, a meek fellow, kind of shy, very timid. Um, he's a proofreader for a science fiction magazine um, who is uh, madly in love with his wife. And um, the basic story is uh, his... Uh, wife is ill in the hospital and his friend decides that he needs to get out and get away so he takes them to this small uh, rural type of bed and breakfast in Georgia and from there things kind of unfold. So uh, my character um, I guess plays a central role because over the course he really goes through a transformation of kind of finding himself and kind of coming out of his shell. So um, I found it quite interesting as, as a role. It's very, uh, it's quite exciting for me to be doing something like this on stage again, because uh, actually most of my performing material is silent. Um, most of my work and my solo show is kind of like Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin type physical comedy, um, which is what I primarily do. And so this was kind of a nice chance for me to branch out and memorize lines again. <laughs> I love comedies, and it sounds like this is very different from the last show that you yes, did. Yes, yes. Uh, complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, I mean, other than the fact that it's sort of the small cast who all have fairly equal parts in the play, it is it is a two-act comedy. It was written by Larry Hsu and first produced in the mid-1980s. Um, and, and like Paul said, you know, it is this comedy about two British people who come into this bed and breakfast. And part of the trick is that, and I won't give too much away, but Paul's character, Charlie, gets represented as a sort of exotic foreigner who doesn't speak English, even though he really does. And people tell him all sorts of secrets. And so that's sort of what's revealed, is what people are hiding and what they're willing to tell people when they think that they don't understand them. And so it does have that sort of fun disclosure element to it. There are a lot of surprises. Kind of that lost in translation sort of thing. Or, or not so lost in translation, unfortunately, <laughs> for the people telling their secrets to Charlie Baker. Do you, what, what language do you pretend to speak? Or do you have a? Well, it kind of, uh, it kind of morphs. Because uh, what happens is Charlie kind of gets stuck in the situation oh. where he really doesn't want to talk at all, 
but uh, due to overhearing certain conversations, he doesn't have a choice. So he has to play along. And, and that is kind of what transpires in Act One. So Act One is a lot of laying out uh, character development so you really get a clear picture of who all the characters are. And then Act Two is when everything kind of starts to be revealed and the tension picks up and the suspense picks up. So it's, uh, it's quite exciting. And uh, it kind of, uh, my accent, I like to keep the other actors on their toes. So you never know. Kind of changes each time. <laughs> well, this sounds like the kind of play that would really appeal to pretty much anyone. I mean, this isn't just targeted for one group of people. No, absolutely. We're hoping to get we're hoping to get a lot of community members in. Um, yeah. But yeah, even when we bring in a new person who's working on tech, it's sort of refreshing for us because they'll be laughing at lines that we've gone over so many times. But it really is a funny show. Yeah, it's that thrill of seeing someone else experience yeah, humor for the first time. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and also, I mean, we're at the point now with the rehearsal process that for us it's become familiar. And so every time we've got someone else out in, in the audience, there's this moment where all of a sudden you hear laughter and you're like, hmm, I guess that, I guess that is funny. I should remember that. Um, so it, it, it's really exciting. I think we're, I'm really looking forward to putting up the production and really having an audience to, to have that final transformation occur. Because we've been working on the Wyatt deck, we do get the random passerby who just stops and watches for a while. <laughs> and it's, that's sort of been a great promotion for us, too, because we have our posters out already and we can tell them, come and see our show. Yeah, <laughs> great word of mouth for that. I mean, I, I know that's what I would do because it sounds really funny. Um, yeah. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be really fun. Yeah. Uh, so on the Wyatt deck, that's, um, that's in the Arboretum. So you guys are going to be showing during picnic day, right? We are, yeah. We're actually running um, April 18th through the 21st and then the 25th through the 28th for our shows. But on the 20th, we're doing something different. We aren't doing our usual 8 p.m. show. We're doing a picnic day special. So we will be out performing at 10 a.m., um, and doing, doing a full performance, but then we will also be on the deck throughout the day for picnic day festivities, sort of promoting our show, promoting Common House, and also promoting our co-sponsor, which is the UC Davis Arboretum. And they've been really helpful in, in helping us with the space and allowing us to really set up and do our build. We've actually done some building on the Wyatt deck, so it will look a little different from what people normally expect to see out there on the deck, which I think will be fun and exciting. Well, it's a great location, and especially being outside and everything. Uh, how are people going to sit? Are, is the audience going to bring chairs, or is there? We'll, we'll have chairs provided, and we have risers set up so you have different vantage points. Um, there will be some, what I like to think of almost as ground lean seating, right, the up front, that are a little, maybe a little less comfortable, so you might want to bring a cushion because you'll be yeah. sitting on, on deck stairs. Um, but we have a pretty good capacity for seating, so we're looking forward to nice large audiences. And the setup is really nice out there. And so as a performer, it really, you're actually performing almost three quarter round, um, which is also really nice. Um, and being out there in the Arboretum with the, the trees in the background, mm -hmm. it really gives it the feeling of this, you know, of this small B and B in, in rural Georgia. So it, uh, yeah, I think that you... really adds a lot to the, that, rural feel being outside. Yeah, the deeper dimension and everything. Yeah. Are, do you film in the dark or not film? <laughs> do you act in the dark because during evening performances? So do you have special lighting and everything? I mean, it's not special, but we do have lighting <laughs> yeah. that we bring uh -huh. in. And, and the, light, the lighting is pretty basic, but we have it nicely lit. Um, throughout the show, so it will, you will definitely be able to see our performers. Um, but yeah, and I think the nighttime will actually work really well for giving you a sense. We've built a sort of indoor frame, so all of the action actually takes place indoors, and so we're trying to give you that feel even though we're out on the deck, and I think it works really well, especially because we're doing night performances with the exception of the 20th. So. Where exactly did The Foreigner come from? I haven't heard of it, but it sounds like an amazing story. Yeah, I'm amazed at how many people really do know and love this show. The minute that we started talking about producing it, our friends on Facebook would say, oh, I love that show, I can't wait to see it. Um, it's by an American playwright, and his name is Larry Shue. 
Um, and again, it was produced in the mid 80s for the first time and had a sort of successful off-Broadway run. Um, but it tends to be a show that smaller theater companies can put on because it does have a small number of characters, but it also has that sort of great community feel. So it's sort of perfect for us. Yeah, and it's off-Broadway run, it actually won a lot of awards in terms of writing and everything. And, and in fact, the, uh, the writer, Larry Shue himself, was in the original production. He played one of the characters, so. So I'm kind of thinking, is this like one of those, um, kind of like an Our Town show where you have like minimal, um, like set and everything where it's, you know, the acting really holds the story? Absolutely, absolutely. I think, you know, the actors are definitely our star feature and the way that they're able to relay the story. I mean, we do have a sort of fun set, of course, but it's not about, you know, pyrotechnics or special lighting or fancy sound. It really is about telling a story. And in that way, it is a lot like our first production of The Woman in Black, where it was sort of, we set it up as a campfire ghost story. Um, here, we've definitely gone and added more costuming and some different features, but it still is about telling that about telling that story. Yeah, and also, we've got a wonderful cast of actors um, that, that, we're, that we're working with. And that's also really exciting for me to, uh, to really work with so many great people that come from diverse backgrounds and what they bring to the production and the kind of that creative process, which is always an exciting part of me. Of, uh, an exciting part of the production is how do you explore your character and the relations between all the other actors and what they bring to the production. So I think that part of the storytelling is really enhanced by the, that group of actors that we've got for this production. Yeah, they're working really well together as an ensemble cast. It makes it much easier for me and my co-director, Katie, <laughs> because a lot of times in rehearsals, they're really coming up with the ideas of where to move and what to do and how to make scenes funnier. We obviously are giving direction, but a lot of it is, in some ways it is play, you know, and we're trying things out. What if I do something over here? What if I try doing Charlie's voice like this this time, you know? And so that kind of collaboration and the sort of democratic process that we have at Common House really enhances the experience for everyone. And I think it allows actors like Paul and our other great actors to really show what they have, you know, and, and show us just how funny they are. And that's the exciting part, because you just keep throwing things out and knowing that at a certain point, they'll say, uh, okay, no, not that, we'll take that out, but then you can just try again. And I think it's really one of those things as an, as an actor that you, you wanna, in a sense, give the directors as much material as you can to work with and then cut away and sculpt instead of just kind of showing up and saying, okay, what do you want me to do? And I think that aspect of, of working with both Vanessa and Katie has been really, really nice. That uh, I know that I can just push and push and push and push and push and that they'll know when to rein me in. <laughs> you don't normally want to rein Paul in. It's fun to let him go. But yeah, there is, there is some sculpting definitely that goes on. <laughs> well, it sounds like there's just like this great balance between, you know, the actors, directors, do uh, does the crew stay about the same, like, or do you have to keep bringing on new people, or do you let people go after the end of a show? It it really depends on what we're producing at any given time. I say, you know, we've done two shows, but but really, based on what we've done so far, everything is always shifting and changing. We tend to have a lot of our core people. We pull in board members as needed, but we really try to bring in new people, and we did bring in new actors for this production. There, there are only a couple of repeats from The Woman in Black, so we've got a fully new crew in that way. We're, we actually are taking one of our wonderful actors, um, Julie, who performed in The Woman in Black, and she's now doing our tech work for us. So people mm -hmm. just shift roles, and again, that's where we look for volunteers. If, if again, it's my co coffee house story, but if we find you in a coffee house and you say you're interested in theater, we might just put you, you know, on a lighting unit or something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's part of how we're trying to create this community group in Davis. Well, it sounds like you're like working to make a really good atmosphere so people want to stay and then just keep helping. And We hope so, that's definitely the goal. <laughs> Making Common House grow. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it's important to start cultivating and developing small professional theater groups here in, in Davis. Um, I find that the, 
the arts community here in Davis is so rich, yet, um, I mean, being in Davis only for three years, I mean, I, I moved here from, from Europe. So coming from that European background of arts and small arts theater and small professional theaters, I was actually a little bit surprised to find that there were so few smaller professional groups here in, in Davis that, um, you know, it's pretty much the Mondavi and then oh, what's in between here and there. So it's really exciting to see Common House Productions and, and other smaller professional uh, production companies starting to pop up and start building the grassroots movement to really have more small professional theater here in Davis, which I think is really something that the community needs. Yeah, we, I mean, we have all the space for it. There's tons of stages. There's a huge clientele for people who want to see theater. Right. Um, the Mandavi just, you know, brings people in, but they don't stay. And we have our couple of, like, children's groups, but I feel like Common House really fills a void that was in Davis. Yeah, and I think also it, it, it will fill a need of bringing professional theater and make it accessible to to. Uh, everybody at you know in terms of the price point for tickets and I think the collaboration with the university and really getting out there so that the theater as a whole continues I think that for theater live theater in particular to thrive and to get people away from television sets and away from uh, texting and everything that they they need to have the chance to go see good live theater um, and really kind of teach everybody again what it's like to go out and enjoy an evening out on, on the Wyatt Deck scene theater. So you were talking about how it's more accessible. What, what are your prices for your shows? So we have $10 for adults and $8 for seniors and students, which tends to be fairly affordable. <laughs> yeah, that, that's amazing compared to, you know, the little that we had before of, of like this level of work. Yeah, and there are other groups, and I think the sort of consensus is the more theater in Davis, the better, and we're just thrilled to be a part of the Davis theater community and to be bringing, again, as Paul said, this live experience to people, and, and really, again, to people of all ages, um, the more we can get those younger patrons out and get them interested in theater, I think the better. Yeah, just planting the seed Absolutely. of want. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Because I think that's really where the future of live theater lies, is in, is in youth. That uh, with, if we don't plant the seeds for live theater, that there's, it's not going to grow. It's not going to continue. And I think we really need to continue that type of live storytelling and that one-on-one -on -one personal contact and sharing experiences and, and emotions because I you know without that we uh, you know we could sit here and text each other for the interview uh, <laughs> you know and I really find that interesting more and more when I'm out I'll see people sitting next to each other having a conversation while they're texting another conversation and um, so I think really the the live theater experience is something that we we really need so I'm really excited to be working with the Common House and keep things going and keep theater live. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's what makes Davis so different is that we keep trying to provide all of these different little outlets for people and to expose people to a different type of culture. Yeah. Know, especially because everyone's got their iPads and everything, so you just walk around with your little personal entertainment. But it's not the same as seeing a show. There's something absolutely. special. You get like that magical feeling when you see someone in front of you putting something on. Yeah, because I think that also is a huge dynamic of the, of the live theater experience is that even though I know my lines and I know what direction it goes, it's something that shifts and changes based on the audience and where they are that evening. And that's really the, the craft is you kind of feel where the audience is leaning and then you, so it's kind of like this ebb and flow. And as an actor, you kind of have to ride those waves and find out where the next ebb is going to be and how to catch that next wave to really keep the energy of the show going. Yeah, that sounds amazing. <laughs> so the, the Foreigner sounds like it's going to be an amazing show. And I'm sure that all the people at Picnic Day, because how many, how many days are you guys putting it on? Um, it'll be eight days total for eight the days. two weekends. Yeah. Okay, so that gives people plenty of time and yeah. no excuses to miss it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think we're thrilled to sort of be, we're not fully affiliated with the University of California Davis. I mean, I, 
I teach there as a lecturer teaching drama, in fact, so it's sort of a nice vehicle for me. But I think it's nice to still have it on campus and have it in that location where people will know where it is. And Picnic Day hopefully will be, again, a great sort of promotion for us. People will see what we're doing and hopefully come back for an evening performance. I'm sure this is going to draw a ton of people into Common House because I, I can picture UCD students, you know, trying to pick something up and becoming a part of the company on the side. And yeah, and maybe they'll want to act in one of our summer productions and that will be a great promotion for that as well. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that your summer production like is going to be amazing too. Do you have any plans so far? We do, but they're not official, so I'm going to keep them under wrap, but there will be more comedy for sure. <laughs> Humor is always the way to people's <laughs> <Absolutely>. heart. <laughs> well, um, is there anything else you'd like to say about The Foreigner? Um, come and see it. You know, we're running for two weekends, and I think it's going to be a blast. Um, I know I'm looking forward to watching my actors put this on and laughing in the wings while they're, while they're moving around and just telling us a great story. The joy of seeing like people laughing for the first time, that can always bring like a new spark and I'm sure that it'll make your performance even stronger. Yeah, well, I'm really excited to have uh, to have some audience, uh, most definitely. <laughs> not just me sitting there. Yeah, not, not, <laughs> not just the two or three people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that ends things on In the Studio. Thanks for joining us. Thank Thanks, you so much, Nora. Nora. <laughs>